the people dress up as like loosely based cosplay on a on a character that they like. It's always cool to see. Wrestling's yeah. also been pervasive too. It was right there along with everything else where I feel it's almost as if everyone has a little bit of wrestling knowledge. Yeah, Hello. Absolutely. And welcome. My name is Jay and with me today is my good old friend Alexander Gonzalez. Hey, hey. And today we have a very special guest, Philip J. Woodward. How are you doing today, Philip? I am doing really well. This has been so much fun so far. Um, I've been having an absolute blast. Good to hear. We haven't scared you off yet. It's uh, hard to do that. It's very hard <laughs> to scare me off. Is there uh, where can people find you? Is there anything you want to plug before we get into the show here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you can find me on Twitter at Phil J Woodward with two L's. Um, and then most other platforms at Philip J Woodward with two L's. Um, and then simply sassyvids.com is a YouTube channel where we interview cool people like um, Mike Bithel or uh, Rahul Kohli. Um, so, uh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Philip has been a very cool dude. And speaking of cool stuff that you do, uh, I might ask you later on about maybe some art commissions later, maybe yeah. if you still do that. Absolutely. But please remember that we are not game devs. How are we all doing? How are we all feeling? What's going on? We all, I'll we tell all you. feeling good? What's up? Uh, sort of. I didn't, the weather was generally, I'm in North Carolina, so it was trending towards cooler. All right. And to the point where I could not wear gym shorts to bed, I started wearing pants to bed. And I was like, I'm, I'm down with this. I'm down with the cause. All of a sudden yesterday, it got a little hot again. My ceiling fan level is at just let's stir the air around. Mm -hmm. And I wore my pants to sleep. And then I tossed and turned all night and I was a sweaty mess. And I was like, we can't do this. We need to have just a nice decline into winter. Because I don't know about you guys, but when it gets colder, I sleep so much better. Uh, it needs to be cold for me to sleep in general. I am a sweaty mess, even if it's 20 degrees in my room like i i have really bad night sweats so i always wake up in a pool of my own juices that <laughs> word choice <laughs> but those are not the juices we were talking about today today we are creating something new every week on we are not game Devs, reimagine a brand new video game idea from our minds join in on the fun be creative and if you have your own unique video game idea or want to patch into ours write into at pound games at gmail dot Calm. Today, Philip has brought an idea of his own that I invited him to pitch. So what you got for us? Yeah, this was this was fun. I was playing um, Death Parade or Death Jamboree. What are the Let It Die pseudo sequel? Isn't it called like Death Verse or something like that? Death like Verse. Death Verse. Death Parade's an anime. Uh, Death Verse <laughs> is a video game, but the song in Death Verse is Death Jamboree, so it's all very confusing. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, and that game kind of has a little bit of a story intro, more so than than most uh, battle royales, and it got me thinking: why hasn't anyone done like a single player battle royale simulation that either satired the genre? Or uh, maybe just made a story for the Battle Royale genre. I mean, the Battle Royale genre was spawned from media. It was spawned from movies. Uh, there's an entire, literally an entire anime section of Battle Royales now. That, like, that's a thing. It's literally a section of animes <clears throat> dedicated to the idea of everyone killing each other. <laughs> and, and I the idea is already flowing in because there's so many archetypes, whether you're talking about anime or popular media that we consume, or even just players that you encounter in battle Royales and the streamers who play battle Royales and how they play too. So you can add all that into a first, uh, like a one player game and then really build it out to make it lively. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to jump in real quick. Just saying the idea of a single player, like, battle royale simulation game that sounds pretty amazing like i feel like we could go 
pretty crazy with this. And when Alex said streamer, there has to be some NPC smuck running around streaming. And when you get near him, all you hear is him like, yeah, chat. So what do you guys think? Is, You're talking I... about one, just one there. The, 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 Oh, the streamers everyone... I'm thinking of, there's definitely, there's going to be a subsect. Yeah. And then I think there's also going to be talk in between them. Right, right. Where, because streamers eat their own sometimes, where then they're just going to be doing that. And then maybe some positive ones too, you know, as they're going through. But I, I definitely see all that happening, including griefers. Because that's going to be like that's, an antagonist I could see getting in there. That's what I was going to say with what you were talking about is like, what if, what if the moment is one of them gets stream sniped, you know? Um... But uh, yeah, so there's there's so many different avenues that you could go with it. Like we were just saying, like more satirical where, you know, you have those people streaming. Uh, the idea that I was concocting in my head was much more serious in the way that like people are actually dying. But the reason they're they're doing this is because the benefits outweigh the, their current position that they're living in. Similar to cyberpunk and edge runners, uh, where these edge runners, you know, run these jobs and um, you know, have, uh, they could die at any moment, but if they complete that job, what they earn from that job is way more than they could ever make working at, you know, Best Buy and whatever cyberpunk's <laughs> equivalent of Best yeah. Buy is. Yeah. Um, it's kind of like, um, Squid Games or, uh, like Death Race. I don't know if you've ever seen Death Race or, yeah, uh, exactly. Gamer. <laughs> gamer. <laughs> oh gosh, that movie. I was thinking some like uh, definitely a serious subsect as well, where there are people who are risking their lives and know that it's all uh, like a big chance to redefine everything where there's all. But at the same time, there's always those people who never quite take it as seriously as they should for some reason. Like it's all a show to them, almost like a Joker esque kind of chaotic way that they're approaching it um, already when I'm thinking about it. Would it make sense to maybe have like a lobby or maybe some type of cutscenes where you get to interact with these players oh, before yeah. you hit the gameplay? Or how are we going to develop the story? What did you think, Philip? Yeah. So so let me let me just go through. I have I have like literally a bunch of paragraphs introducing the game. Uh, so I'll just read through this really quickly. So the title that I came up with was "Living in Elysium." Um, so there, if you look up Elysium, you know, the definition of Elysium has a really good kind of connotation to a battle royale in and of itself, uh, essentially living in death, right? Um, so murky clouds uh, hung low above the futuristic city, bright lights um, trans, you know, showing through them up through the pollution of uh, with luminance, uh, not the moon or a single star could be seen through the layer of dense water and chemical particles. Rain began to fall from the soured depths of the intoxicated cumulus. Each droplet touched the ground uh, with a bite and a slight sizzle. And old, an old blanket, stained and bleached uh, from the passage of time, laid crumpled on the ground, a figure underneath. The ground started to fill with spots that shimmered in the city's lights and holograms. The crowded streets emptied quickly as the city of uh, or the cycle of rain started uh, to get heavier. One wet sphere hit the blanket, and then another, and then many. Ow! 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 A voice screams <laughs> from under the blanket. Uh, as it shot up uh, like a spring and began to emit small clouds of burning fabric. Uh, the character defined here, or by a character creator earlier in the game, that was that's just a parentheses note that I had. Because I have a, you know, in my, in my mind, like, a character creator is necessary for a game like this where you're trying to put yourself in that role. Like, you could obviously write a story about a certain character, but... I really like the idea of living in that world. I mean, that's um, what a lot of battle royales are about is customization of your character, even though you may not get to choose what your character looks like as a whole, like Fortnite, for example, there's still tons of skins to choose from to like, you know, show off your personal style. Um, so a character creator in a game like this just seems right. Um, ran to the nearest overhang to shelter themselves from the onslaught of annoying precipitation. Wait, how long was I asleep? The young teen held the blanket over their head and ran toward the nearest clock. 1936? 
How did I sleep the whole day away? My sister's first match is starting. Um, and so here's where you gain control of the character. And so in this moment, like you get control of your character and you start running around this little uh, small space that they've created for you. And your goal is to figure out how to get out of this area. Um, so in my head, there's four different, you know, directions you can go. One's blocked off by a gate. If you walk up to it, press a button, it says this gate is locked. There's no way I'm getting past here. The other one is a delivery van where the person's hiding inside because they don't want to go outside in the acid rain. Um, you try and jump over it or do anything, and this little robot knocks you back and says stop that or something. And then the two other directions, you can go either one. And as you jump and move around, you vault over the objects and stuff, learning how movement works. If you can't figure it out or if the game realizes that you're having issues, it pops up the controls on the screen and says, hey, this is how you jump over an object. Instead of force feeding it down your throat of like, this is how you do it. Um, and then moving forward, you then have to solve like some little puzzles that teach you like the basic shooting mechanics. I had this idea of like every character starts, you know, in, in Warzone, every character starts with a pistol, right? So I had this idea of like every character starts with a wrist gun, like a wrist pistol. So since this world is enamored with uh, the game, the game itself, um, instead of having a pistol, you have like a BB gun or an airsoft version of the wrist pistol. And this lets you get through the starting area where maybe you have to shoot a rope to knock down a, a ramp, or maybe you have to um, shoot something that's like, you know, attached to a, a rat or something and it knocks the rat out and you have to go pick it up and unlock a, a gate or something. You know, something of, the, of that idea where both directions are a little bit different, but they still teach you all the same mechanics. And then once you get past that area, it opens up to what I call your hub world where you can run around. This is the world you're going to explore and talk to people that you meet throughout the game, vendors where you can purchase stuff, whether it's clothing and things like that. Um, and then I had this idea of, well, how do you separate the, like, how do you keep people from buying better and better gear or keep it balanced? Because eventually, you know, you start the game and how are you going to survive against somebody that has way more money than you? Well, your outside money doesn't ha doesn't work inside the game, inside the the sphere of the where the the battle royale itself takes place. There, you have your own currency that you build up as a player, and as you build up ranks, you only have matches with those people in higher ranks. So you start out at a lower rank. Those lower rank games are held, and this is like the story of the world, not the. Um, like what you are doing technically, obviously you start at the, the lowest point. Um, anyway, so this teaches you, you know, the hub area, there's hidden things throughout the hub area world where you can collect things, little collectibles. Um, and in my mind, I'm like, I don't want this to be gated off, even though this is the intro of the game. Um, like, let's say you, you just want to get to the cutscene where your next gameplay point is. And that's like on a map where your little marker is and you're trying to get there. So hey, let's say you beat that part, you beat the intro, all those collectibles are gone in a lot of games, right? I, I don't lie, I hate that. I hate when I can't explore an area and I accidentally go the right direction through a doorway I didn't realize was gonna cut me off from the rest of the game. And now I can't go back and get those collectibles until I replay the game or until the game gives me a chapter select like Last of Us Part Two or something. Yeah, it, I completely resonate with that. I, I wanna say, I think it was like Alana Pierce who tweeted something that was like, does anyone else get anxiety about choosing two paths where one advances the game and makes you lose all collectibles on the second path? Yep. And I feel that all the time. We're all sometimes tread in and I'm like, oh, I know that character. I'm not talking to you. And then I'll back <laughs> up and go the other way. So absolutely. Yeah, let's have it so that you can always go back. There's the hub world. You can always go back to your roots of where you started. I really like with everything that you placed in here. I can imagine there being key core characters surrounding the arena where you know there's the store person where everyone buys mm. their gear from them and maybe there's the announcers who are going to be integral and then <clears throat> i like the idea that you bring cash in so it shows that the main appeal of the arena is like everyone's equal here this is where you can decide your own fate 
<clears throat> and then so the main character is going to go see their sister in their first ever game. I feel like there's going to be some kind of story motivation that happens to their sister that makes them want to join the games and chase after her to get up to her rank to then make sure that she's safe, depending on whatever force or driver is moving them towards that. Was that where you were kind of going there so with? There, or There's two ways. There are two ways it could go. The way that you're talking about or you have her die, right? And you're chasing the person that killed her. Obviously, there's more than just those two things, but I thought about both of them. The way I ended up going was uh, her dying so that you could then be further introduced to the way the mechanics of the actual battle royale function without feeling like you're losing something or not playing correctly. So you basically, once he gets to the arena, you take control of this. You look up at the big screen and you see what's happening. It zooms into the big screen and then goes down into the gameplay of the battle royale just about to start where you get behind the camera of your sister and start playing as her. Mm. Um, and then you start exploring, learning how to you know loot boxes and switch um, gear around and all that stuff. And then once you get to a certain point within that, then she dies. And there's a cutscene of of you know who killed her, and my thought was like exactly like you were talking about earlier, like one of these. This is just a game, you know. What did you think of that kill? You know, sort of sort of people. Um, and it just you see that, and it uh, instead of you know making you not want to do it, it makes you want to chase after that guy. Absolutely, and I can even see the guy picking up like a memento that he picks up from every kill he gets. That's like something on her person. Maybe it's a keychain, or maybe it's like her wrist gun. Maybe everyone has their own unique wrist gun that they trick out, and then uh, he'll collect like a piece of that. So then you're just like, I want to get that back, like a uh, kind of thing. And that being the primary motivator for sure. That way, I think that's uh, it's it allows them to the main character to grow into the world without having a hyper kind of uh, tunnel vision of just on their sister. Cause then when the sister dies, it's like, I have to open myself up to this world to see how to get to this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what else did I write in here? Um, While you're looking through that, how yeah. attached are you to the sister dying? Oh no! I mean, not not at all. I mean, that could go that could go any direction. Uh, uh, that that was just what I ended up writing out. Right. Um. I don't know if you like this idea. Let me float this one by you while you look up. Uh, what else you got written in? Uh, but what if instead of dying or um, getting like I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the other option was actually, but what if she like, while you're watching this game happen, so you play the game as her and you go through the tutorial of the battle royale round and then uh, you, she ends up meeting up with like a known fighter or whatever and then they start fighting and then that becomes a cutscene and it like goes back out, up, out from the screen and it's your main character watching the screen of your sister fighting this uh, other person and then the screen kind of like flickers and like goes black for a second and then it goes back up and then like whatever was on the screen there was the fight of the sister and another fighter and that's just not on the screen anymore it's just a different area and then they just don't mention the sister or that fighter anymore and they're just gone and like they just disappeared and they never mention it no one says anything and those uh the sister's gone this other fighter's gone they've disappeared and then you join the games to like figure out what's happening and then there's like uh fighters in this game that are like paid to go in and they're like uh set to win and so there's like a rig system maybe and then you're like uncovering this like underground organization so like a that's side like, plot yeah that's so you like, have uh, the battle royale and then possible corruption or how people learn to live with it or set up black markets or side economies within the battle royale structure right. that's maybe not legitimized interesting yeah it's like a mixture of the two ideas of like rather than following your sister you're still following her you're just following her shadow and trying to figure out what happened and instead of her dying she disappears right um 
So, and yeah, so you don't I mean, even know as a player if she's dead or still alive. And so there's not really, there's a rush, but it's not like we need to get there tomorrow to the highest rank. You know what I mean? You could kind of like, well, I'm still learning and I need to get better. And um, you're learning more information. Uh, I don't know how you want to do like the end or like how you get to the next rank. But I was thinking maybe like at the end of each major rank round, you kind of have a mini boss of sorts where you fight like a a famous fighter that has a personality. Maybe they're one of these streamers or maybe they're just a really good fighter or they're like an ex-prisoner or something like that. Um, and then every mini boss, you move on to the next rank, right? And then you fight all these more difficult level uh, characters and stuff. What where I'm getting with this too is it almost feels it's definitely a game and it's and there's it's very full bodied but there almost could be different seasons right the way that battle royales have different seasons yeah. so as you go up into certain ranks all of a sudden it'll be like season two as like you unlock that rank and maybe there's like a little promotional video that you get to see or when you join the arena it'll have some kind of cut scene showing you a different season so then maybe there's you can add different layers of gameplay on top of that or the arena slightly changes to cater to players with more advanced techniques yeah so so that's kind of like the other thing so, f so first of all uh I came up with the idea of calling the actual arena Gladius Rising um, because you are a fighter who is rising through the ranks. So I thought it's kind of a fun nod to the old gladiatorial arenas of, of ancient Greece and Rome. Um, and uh, but also, you know, had kind of a, a nod to like what was actually happening as well. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of the idea is that as you continue to play, you earn currency that helps you buy new equipment, and then that ranks you up into different tiers of um, of battle. So as you go up the different tiers, the people you start to see are people that you're seeing on billboards that are like advertisements. So a lot of the character building is either you see them in the streets, you talk to them, um, you you know learn about them, but the highest ones are like these people that you don't see on the streets because they're too good to be on the streets. They're like, if they were out on the street, you, did you want to say something oh, no, or you just you raising your hand? Cause Sorry. you're too good. You're too good to be on the streets. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so you, uh, you don't see them outside of their like commercial on the TV or their, uh, you know, advertisement on a holographic billboard or something like that. So when you finally actually get to the point where you're fighting them, they're like these larger than life people and um, you get to see them actually in action and, and, you know, in this case, take them down. So that kind of adds to what you were talking about of like the mini bosses um, as you get into the higher ranks, maybe like one of maybe not all of them at once go in, but like one of them has to contractually go in um, to keep their status quote unquote. Yeah. So they have to, join a battle and then you just happen to be the one who takes a lot of them down throughout the game um, well, i think it would also be kind of cool if we do have a few of them in each match where now instead of having one whereas before in the lower ranks as a player you're less experienced and so you're fighting one major guy at each rank right but as you build to the top maybe we throw in a couple major guys in there as other random encounters that you can meet and they work more like Kind of like in Borderlands, there's the badass versions of everything. Mm -hmm. They'll kind of work like that. They'll have extra abilities, kind of more special uh, uh, like skills yeah. or better guns, and they'll have a more of a personality. Um, and then maybe if you encounter one of these like not super famous but semi famous people, there could even be like a little cutscene that plays. It would like zoom back up into the screen. It's like, oh, our rising star has just met flamey button and then it <laughs> introduces this guy he has like his, his own trailer and something it's like flamey button and then he comes out and then you, uh zooms back into the match and then you fight flamey button it has his own little uh health bar it says flamey button underneath it has like a bar and a half of health and then you fight him and then it's not a boss but it's also not like a regular ad either you know yeah i could I could see that being um, there being mini bosses like that, but I, I like Philip's idea if 
of there are a couple characters on billboards and advertisements and different things that you see or small screens as you're exploring this world that are the larger than life. Like they made it. Yeah. They're up there. There's the veteran. There's um, the other one that got a brand deal. There's everyone's favorite because of how beautiful they are. Well, I was going to say the really maybe, attractive one. That's you know, like, can you really fight? <laughs> or that where yeah, where it's almost as if you're like, they seem to be perfect in almost every way, like symmetrically skill set in terms of brand deals. And then maybe you do have those lower level ones where it's like, and there could be humor added there where it's like, I just got my first juice deal. Don't ruin this for me. And they're like <laughs> trying to go in and, and keep on top as they're barely breaking through. And that would be like one of the guys you see on the street, right? Like you're yeah, walking mm -hmm. down and there's like a dynamic event where you see a bunch of people with cameras crowding around this guy. And he's like, ends up yelling at his like poor little assistant because he forgot to get the right shirt for a photo shoot or something. And yeah, like you said, he's like, this is my first deal, man. Like, how could you do this to me? Um, and yeah, just have like weird dynamic events to fill out that stuff. Um, and then another thing I was thinking about too was uh, creating a relationship uh, with people. Like after your first few matches, uh, you like, as you will see throughout like the beginning of the game, you'll see all these, these brands or these teams, you know, like team liquid and stuff like that, um, where they, you don't know what they are at first, but as you play, you realize, Oh, these are recruitment teams. And then you find out that there are like five different teams that you can join. Um, and you meet actually a small team of characters that you end up playing with that are like AI. Cause I also thought about the idea of how, you know, battle royales have solo mode, duos mm -hmm. mode, uh, trios, quads. And so what if you were able to like, as the game progressed, you ended up building up this team and you started playing with them. Um, and, and of course, them like Pokemon. Well, so that's the thing, right? Like, so that was the thing I was thinking about. Are these fully fleshed out characters that are with you through the rest of the game that could have something happen to them? Or are they more like XCOM? where they're really cool they've got dialogue and they they talk to you outside of the game but like there's only so many of them and if they die in the match they're done they're gone i feel like I, it could be kind of like persona where it's like these people have character lines and like not like your main party but like your confidants where it's like these people you could have conversations with if you keep leveling them up you could build more relationship with them and get further unlocks but then if you want it to be it so like if they die they die you know we could also have that where you just can't complete that uh social link for lack of a better word um with that particular party member um and then maybe to combat if you just happen to just let all your teammates die. Maybe there could be like a recruitment tactic in the game, like a mechanic where you could recruit from other teams and then you could start pulling in. For, so then completionists like me won't be like, shoot, do I have to play this game five times to be able to meet every <laughs> single character so, and every single team? So one of my favorite games is Fire Emblem Three Houses. Right, yeah, yeah. And, we were talking about that recently, actually. <laughs> and you have to play it three times to really get the full story and i guess technically four if you get the dlc um and oh my dog is barking let me know if it, it's too loud um i my brother-in-law must be home you'll hear uh, our dogs go off at a certain point in this episode okay. as well don't worry about it <laughs> perfect um so yeah that, that was something that i thought about was like you could have these really in-depth characters but then it, like if you lose them, A, it could feel super devastating to lose them. And now you you'll never know what their end story game is like if they if they have like a story arc attached to them. And that could be devastating to a player. Um, so it's it's a really tough balance because I know for me, um, I I am a save scummer. Like if I if something happens that I just abhor or don't like. I, I'm like, screw it. I'm going to reload. I'm going to reload unless it's a game that forces me to auto save. And then I'm like, okay, I guess I'm just going to play through it. And what happens happens. But if, uh, if it's a game like that, like it better be like a six hour experience because I definitely want to try again and see if I can do better next time. So if it's an 80 hour experience like fire emblem, 
that's not happening. Like right. I play that game three times. I'm done. <laughs> I played it twice and I'm like, I can imagine the third one. I'll just do, use my <laughs> imagination. Uh, Connect the dots from there. But I, I really like the idea where you could, yeah, recruit them. And then also I know you could play this uh, BR solo, <clears throat> but if you have squads and, uh, uh, trios and doubles and stuff if you got these teammates where in most brs like if your teammates f drop down you're gonna of course go and try and help and save and revive uh but if they die not a big deal right um uh, but in this game if there is permadeath and i'm sure that will allow the player to be like permadeath on or off just because you know some people will get real touchy about that stuff uh but like if you're teammates can die and if they die in the game in a battle royale and they die and they're down and you need to go revive them you are gonna go help that person because you're like i still need to find out what happens to you and your father uh yeah uh joseph stan um, that was, I'm that was <laughs> absolutely my thought was like you have to include a revive mechanic you can't just like they're down and they're dead that's done right. no there has to be a, a, a like a pick them back up but if you know they're down for too long or something then they're gone yeah and so i and feel like the battles will end up being a lot slower than what you're used to in multiplayer battle royales so you'll be more careful about placement and not just running in guns blazing and jumping into a fire team of two different squads just uh firing it out what are you gonna say alex i was gonna say if your teammates do die, let's say they bleed out, what have you, what I want to do is um, a cutscene where you're interacting with them dying and doing a location specific cutscene. So if they die while you're near them, you're going to kind of be holding them. Almost imagine like the original Assassin's Creed's when you'd kill an assassin, they'd be like, oh, you got me. You know, and they just start talking right then and there. And you, there's like chaos happening in the background. You see shooting, but, but they're like, you got to make it. You got to understand. All I wanted was for you to succeed. <laughs> and then you, and then you're just like, oh my God, I can't believe I let Woodworth die. Oh boy. <laughs> and you're just sitting there like, I've, I've only got one other person left. Yeah. There's like, I just got halfway into this match. And I imagine it being something like that where we're going to tie it together and make it just more visceral there where each person, not only do you have a successful animation there, but you also have a death animation cutscene that you can unlock to. Sorry, completions, because then they have to sit there and watch every single person die. Right. But I thought it would be just something really cool, just like a uh, like a nice bon voyage for every character. That way there's just a little piece there. And maybe depending on... This this is going a little out there, but depending on how far in stages that you have gone with them or unlocked uh, companionship, you get a better death scene. I think instead of a better death scene, I think it just unlocks once you get to a certain level with someone. So if they die before you get super close with them, they just kind of die. But if you're like super close to them, you get this like special death scene for for that character. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. I, I also, I think thinking about what you just said about being a completionist and stuff, I think if you get to max like reputation with them, then you get a choice after beating the game as to whether or not you want to unlock the deck, the, the death scene or not. <laughs> the, yeah, that'd be much better. Just to oh, have like just, some kind just of like, you could watch it, just <laughs> mass killing of all your teammates at the yeah, end of the yeah, game. Just, <laughs> just everyone dies. Do you, do you want to watch their death scene? <laughs> yes. I would actually love that. Yeah. I would actually really love that where I'd be like, you know, because after you beat the game, you're like, what else is here? Crack open a beer and be like, how'd they die? And then because he, <laughs> you get to be a little bit more detached and seeing it happen in the action. Right, so that would be cool. Right. Um, yeah. The the hardest part is, for me thinking about like, obviously the, the hub world stuff is is pretty easy, right? In the, not easy obviously no game is is easy because it, they're all shoestrings and bubblegum and dreams but um when when you think about like the the hub world uh you have more freedom so walking down a side street you can have a, a dynamic event happen you can have a story sequence spawn you know when you walk down there um things like that but like in this open world environment of the actual battle royale it can be a lot harder to tell stories or to show things um so 
that's been one of the biggest challenges while, you know, thinking about this, actually thinking about this for like two weeks, because I posted a throwaway tweet and Jay was like, hey, <laughs> so it may, it forced me to actually start thinking about the idea in more detail, which is funny because this isn't the first time I've thought about a battle royale video game. Like back when uh, battle royales first started coming out, I started thinking about like, how could you make the original movie battle royale mm. into a game? And like, well, like you go to us, there's like different locations on the map and you can go there. And then there's like almost fallout level sequences where like you talk to them and try and let them know that you're not their enemy. And then, but then you can also like poison their food or like do crazy stuff like that. So there's, there's that too, that side of it where you could almost make it like a singular battle Royale experience where you start on a remote Island. There's a hundred people on the Island. They all make factions and, and stuff, but there's like, there's random ones that are out in the world. And there's factions that like inhabit different areas. And you like have this weird fallout RPG where you're trying to befriend everyone or just straight out, make enemies with them or whatever. And yep. uh, slowly make your way to trying to either, overthrow the power that's holding the event somehow by like hacking your exploding neck brace uh or shackle whatever or you know killing everybody and being number one and then having like a almost twisted metal black cut scene where you get your wish granted but it's not quite the wish you wanted you know yeah um i don't i don't want to anyway that's... too far into this battle royale Pot, uh, prospect game but it would be really cool <laughs> if yeah there's like this battle royale single player game and you could either go around and try to kill everyone in these factions that are all self-forming and they form over time and there's like a timer because the, the people are dying occasionally right. throughout the game but during this timer you could either choose to like find your faction and try to like kill everyone else or yeah go around the island to very specific points in the island and like try to figure out how to overthrow the game and like beat the game and get out hack your neck brace go kill that teacher that is kind of crazy and has a weird thing for that one girl and then <laughs> um get off the island without killing anyone so i think i think that would be a pretty cool game uh yeah that's that's just that's an old old idea that i toyed with i don't want to get that involved in this but yeah. i just thought i'd bring it up this isn't the first time i've thought about a battle royale video game before um <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say I, one I more could, thing real quick. Yeah, go for it. Uh, the last thing I'll say on that other Battle Royale idea is that my other idea for it was that it has a 36-hour real-time countdown. Oh, cool. So you can spend 36 hours in this world, and that's it. Because um, that's how long the... How, how many the, days pass the timer the for the game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's 36 hours in the movie. I think it might be 24. Well... They they get there and it's like nighttime and then right it's the like whole, the very early morning or something yeah. when they get sent out and you're right and then when they leave and escape it's like early morning again and so right. yeah, it's probably so like it's like 24 hours 24 hours you're right but I was thinking 36 to kind of balance it out for a video game I don't know anyway yeah. I was thinking here with this story that we could make it go as deep as the player wants. And what I mean by that is there's going to be this essential to the world. Gladius rising is not only the way that people can maybe like, that's their uh, dream. That's, that's what they go for, but it's also the main form of entertainment in this world. Right? So we're going to have talk shows. There's going to be newspapers. There's going to be banners and advertisements. That's going to be telling a story. And then there's also going to be, I can imagine just the way that there is a Philip DeFranco, just that the way that there is uh, people talking about streamers, there's going to be little announcements here and there as there's internal strife. And then on top of that, we're going to have the factions and you're going to hear different words where the factions, you know, they're all going to have their hangouts and their turf where you're going to hear about the rumblings. So maybe you hear from one faction like, no, he went too far. We're all going after him this time and we're going to end that faction once and for all. So then, you know, oh, OK. So we know path factions definitely going to go in on the next round against this uh, other faction. So then you can kind of piece together what's going to be happening based off that. And also a uh, random, random question I just thought of are like, let's say we go into duos and trios with these uh, side characters. 
are they going to be part of different factions? Are we going to have them kind of fight or uh, have that political intrigue in there? Or maybe that we're only there. They're like the own splinter group where it's like, no, we're the freaks and geeks here. We're not part of any of the uh, factions in, in my, in my like envision uh, my vision for it. It was that you join one of the, the teams, one of the, the okay. like factions and whichever faction you join is, is like, those are the characters that you get to meet and oh, whether okay. you do it dynamically to where whichever team you join is the same characters to kind of save on resources, but maybe their stories are a little bit different um, is one thing, but I mean, it'd probably be again, this is fire emblem three houses <laughs> talking, but um, it'd be best, you know, if, if you were able to join the faction and each faction had its own set of like characters that kind of rose up in your era, quote unquote. And then like mm -hmm. in each round, you're basically one of those factions is fighting after you join the faction that you join. So you're literally having to kill these other factions. Yeah. Um, I assumed it was going to be like the latter as well, where it's, it's you join this faction. It has like, let's say, eight kids in there and they all have their own personalities and stories and conversations with the player and then you have these other four to five factions that have the same amount or maybe one less one more uh player and then they all have their own personalities and stuff and th all our three houses you could recruit them all and then maybe they'll have like you know how in three houses there's a support level things and so you could get like people from other factions to like talk to each other and you could find yeah. out how they interact together maybe one faction and a warring faction if they talk to each other they're gonna be like man i used to hate your guts yeah <laughs> well i used to hate yours too and they like uh bro it out or whatever that's that's another thing. For legal reasons, you have to be eighteen to play Gladi or to join Gladius Rising. Right. Uh, so so they are still children, but they are over the legal age of eighteen. Um, Is there an age max, or can you be fighting up against like a, a eighty five year old man? <laughs> oh my gosh like the first ever winner of gladius rising yeah like after you start taking out all of their stars at one point they parade this guy out there to be like will they kill will the main character kill him huh who are you willing to kill and he's just like this old man coming out here Ugh. reminds me of uh of the sniper from metal gear solid 3 why am i forgetting his name um it's like the really old dude who like i know what his sleeps. face looks like but I right? don't know Metal Gear Solid that well. I'm I'm just blanking like on it really eye. weirdly right now. Yeah. yeah. And I I can't imagine either. I don't I'm not very good at MGS uh history at all. I've like dabbled. I'm like, does is that the one that photosynthesizes? Like yes. I'm uh Okay, so I I'm better than I thought. But that's <laughs> that's all I got. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so th that was that was my thought. He's like he's super old and like he's really good at what he does, but you know he's also like sits in the same place for long periods of time. And if you're good enough, mm -hmm. you can like sneak up on him or something. He's got like the original uh, strategy that no one ever employs anymore called camping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I was just gonna say really quick. Uh, so one big thing, right, is that this map is technically never going to change or could change dynamically. But I was thinking like from a legitimate like resource perspective in video games, it'd be much easier if the city stayed the same and the arena stayed the same. So you could concentrate on character and dynamic events. Mm -hmm. It'd be really cool. Okay. Yes. The map stays the same. And of course the city will stay the same, but characters will move around depending on where you are in the story. Kind of like persona would do it where this guy that was standing here is now standing over here by the shop talking to someone else. Uh, but in the arena, I like the idea of it staying the same for the most part, maybe near the very, very end of the game, right before the final match, maybe in the story of what's happening time is also progressing like uh it's taking some time for the player to get to this um final rank and um no matter how long it takes for the player to get there by the time the player does get there the game will be like oh now it's the end of the valor season in gladius <laughs> rising introducing season five uh, hot metal 
and then it's like a <laughs> brand new map and it's like a brand and then that's just for the last round of ranking and stuff and so you like have this brand new map to like fight out against all the biggest could, and baddest and most famous you could also um make it to where like there's different scenarios right like hot metal is like literally the the world is covered in like a liquid metal or something so like it's sli it's slippier slipperier <laughs> it's more slippery um and uh you know like different things like that or like there's snowing at one point but the way that i was thinking about randomizing it because in this in this world you're not gonna um you know fall from the sky or whatever so my idea was that it's a radial arena right <clears throat> and you basically are in these starting gates that rotate around the map. Now that animation doesn't need to be made. Like you just, when you load in to your, um, your thing, you know, you walk in, you're staring at the door and then there's some rumbling and some debris falls down. And then that's like to signify that the arena is spinning or that the, you're spinning around the arena, whichever one happens. Um, so you're always ending up at a different starting point. And that's where it becomes different. Like the items within the map are different. And then where you start is different based on which door you end up opening out of with this radial system. Uh, so everything is always randomized when you start a match. Yeah. But you still um, have an opportunity to learn the map and get familiar with areas and find yes. your spots what or right. whatnot. Uh, I could also imagine like the player count being what? 36 people yeah that's that's something i was thinking about too was like obviously do we want this to be a hundred out of a hundred or because we're going to be doing this so many times do we want it to be something that's more personal more um you know condensed i think smaller would work better one because we're gonna have so many characters it'd just be easy to make less characters uh if we were to think about like making this a real game and having hundreds of characters that have a semblance of a personality and style and a look to them. Um, if we have like each round be like 36, a nice even number that you could divide in three, two, one, of course. And can you do it in fours? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you could divide it in all sorts of numbers, 36, and then we could have a bunch of different characters going in and out from our pool of a bunch of people that we might have, and they'll just all go in and out of there. Um, and then you'll be able to meet new characters all the time. So it seems like there's a lot of characters, but then you'll also see repeat characters if you if they didn't die. Um and still have that sense of familiarity. And uh, in terms for the story, if you kill an opponent, how what what would be the difference of making them go down and killing them in the game, and then versus killing them? Because I feel like there should be a a way to allow certain characters to still persist in the game, if if you so choose, or if you don't fully kill them i don't i don't know how that would uh how that would happen sure yeah so i've i've always thought since we're kind of doing a satire or like you know a, a kind of play on the battle royale universe is that they get knocked down before they get killed right um <clears throat> and uh so, so my idea was always that you like still have to walk up and kill them or shoot them multiple times or whatever, perform an execution, which is way more savage um, and maybe affects some sort of morale meter that you have that, you know, makes you very like darker or whatever. Um, you could go as big or small with that as you want to. Uh, but based on what you, you were just telling me is it'd be kind of cool if when you knocked somebody down, like they could have an insurance system that they pay for with the in-game currency that like Fultons them out to where like a, um, as soon as they're knocked down, they, a balloon pops up from behind them and they like get tossed up or something and then picked up by like the net or whatever. Um, and somebody comes in and like pulls them out and rescues them or whatever. Um, and I, I 
Yeah, okay. I was thinking along with that is you could have the Fulton system, and then if you want to just down them and take them out of the match, you can take their wrist gun. So it's from there that you can buy credits. It's from there that you can get everything. So you can take that, and then you can give it back and try to recruit them, or they can try and buy a new one or something. I, something I don't know. Like I just. That. Yeah, some okay. kind of like unique identifier. Yeah, it, it'd be an interesting take on like the revenge system from uh, Shadow yeah. um, Shadow of Mordor, right? Where like, hey, we've never seen another game do something like that. Um, but yeah, if it's like a random character, it could just be you get some benefit for saving for like sparing their life or saving them. When um, you get to the hub world, you have a, a message in the inbox, but like I glad that you didn't kill me here's 200 in credit in game yeah, credits so, or something like that so that could be a thing too like if you kill them you get more in game like in gladius rising currency but if you spare them maybe you get outside of gladius arena or a rising um currency yeah. because my thing about like the outside world is you can buy a nicer car, you can buy better clothes, you know, you can afford like uh, stuff for your your house, your apartment. You can afford a, a better apartment All because the, the cosmetic ahead. stuff. Um, yeah, I'm exactly. Also this is like a cyberpunk inspired world, so it's going to be yes. very neon. In your opening yep. paragraph, there was a lot of lights and yeah, um, <laughs> glistening. Uh, puddles and again i had just watched edge runners so right. i was very influenced <laughs> that, that happens on our show it's it's whatever we last watched or played is is what the idea yeah. is pretty much so you know and, and that led me to like god i wish there was like a cyberpunk style world where um you know you could just you could play in that world and have it be your own story instead of johnny silverhand's story i didn't right. say that though uh, um Anyway, something I wanted to add a while back, I just haven't had a chance to interject it in. I would I like the idea of this world having a battle pass and the battle pass being like you have to buy it with in without game currency. So the world currency, we need to come up names for these currencies. So the currency yeah, that's yeah. not in the game, but out of the game uh it, for let's, a, let's call them let's call them g coins and cash how about that g coins and cash all right so once you build up like a bunch of cash from just getting famous in this game and stuff and then there's always been this dangling like ad there's ads everywhere it's like join the battle pass right <laughs> and then it's like it costs like 900 million cash or something but not that's not that's a lot uh, it costs 1 million cash and to join it when you join it that's when you could go in and you could talk to all these like super famous battlers that you've been seeing in ads and stuff like they're hanging out in this like diamond lounge, the battle pass lounge. Right. And that's like it's it's like this VIP like thing. Yeah. Yeah. And where, in there, like almost like um, uh, the boys like the going into the tower and the boys like of this, you know, the tower of the seven or whatever. Right. It's like that, but for for this world. Yeah, and you go there, you get to meet, and then finally talk to the all these superstars that you and see. And there's like an exclusive shop where you can buy. You can use your G coins to to buy like cool, like exclusive weaponry or something. Yeah, and I was thinking like maybe every seven matches, it's like here's your uh, weekly reward, um, and it gives you like a. A uh, freaking skin for your backpack or something, and like <laughs> maybe if you rank up in your your club membership high enough, yeah, you get like an exclusive gun skin or something, and it's or like a cool t shirt, and that's just because you've been in this pass for so long. It's just like playing on the battle pass idea. It, there's a bunch of different ways that yeah, I could see that being where it's going to be lived in. What I'm trying to, I guess my only uh blind spot here is how do we see this ending like where is the mm. end result so, after all of this yeah so i mean if we go with the original idea that i had um you know you get to the very the very top echelon of of where you are and you kill the the antagonist you know the person that um killed your sister and then there is you know some sort of a climax battle between you and that person 
Um, like you don't even see them until you've gotten to the 35th person or whatever. And then when you're down to one V one, he shows up and you have like this dynamic battle with that person that culminates into you avenging your sister and then having some sort of ending based on the choices that you made throughout the game. Um, And then that would be that version. But then of course, you know, the version that Jay was talking about earlier where, you know, it's more of a conspiracy thing. Like you just bring Gladius rising down, right. Um, And expose them for what they are. And it has almost like an Akadama drive, like taking down the system. If you haven't seen Akadama drive, check it out. It's, it's a cool cyberpunk anime. (laughs) Sounds cool. I always want more cyberpunk stuff. You just, you just don't get too much of that right now. We will soon, though. I, I imagine a cyberpunk feature uh, very, very soon. But um, very cool. Uh, one last thing that I am curious about in this game is just generally, like, what does a match play out like? Is it is, Are we playing more like Apex Legends, or are we playing like... Uh, I, I don't know, like a Rainbow it's, Six Siege type of thing. You know what I mean? Like, is is this like super arcadey and fast and jumping around everywhere, or is it really slow pace and you like hunker so, down and like look around edges and stuff? So my thought as far as gameplay, like this is a cyberpunk world. We want this to be fast. We want this to be fun. We want there to be, you know, rocket packs. We want there to be. Uh, cool little robot mines and different technologies that you can employ that you know are only can only really be done in a game you know a single player game stuff that you want to do in in current battle royales but can't because you know it's just not built that way there's other Um, people that are real life people running around in ways you can't ever predict right exactly um and there is some of that randomness here but it's still like you know, you can still tell who is a random jobber in Fortnite and who's a real person. (laughs) Um, if, if, if they shoot at you three times and they see you before anyone could possibly see you, then, you know, it's a bot. (laughs) Um, now that's not to say that's what would happen in this game, but, um, you know, like, I just I imagine that there are just fun things and ways to customize and build your character out that, couldn't be done in just a regular battle royale because a some of it is carries with you as you play it's permanent um yeah you're always going to find like gear that could be better than what you have in the random like loot chests around the the environment but as you play you do get stronger you do get better armor and things like that that stay with you permanently um, you could do it to where every round is completely random. Um, but for me personally, I want that ability to, you know, feel like I'm getting stronger. Um, cause yeah, customizing my character for the single player world, getting my apartment, furnishing my apartment, getting my dope car to make, you know, driving around the hub world a little easier, uh, stuff like that is cool, but it doesn't quite you know, feel the same if every single match I'm going into is just the static. I start with my wrist pistol and that's all until I get better gear throughout the match. And that's also going to like slow down the gameplay because you're the pacing is going to be slow, fast, slow, fast. And it'll be similar when you play, you know, the game and, and get upgrades and stuff, but you still start out in a better place. Yeah. Maybe something you could spend your cash on to help with like a feeling of I'm progression progressing each match is you could upgrade your your uh, I don't know cyber kinetics in your head like uh, uh implant that you have that allows you once you're in the game to craft better gadgets like make better trip bombs or make better uh grenades or make better like not so much weapons but be able to craft like better little tools that you could use like camouflage tools and stuff like that uh just so you could like have something outside of the game to also spend cash on that's not just either up better guns or cosmetics but something you could feel like you're 
making your character better so in the round you can get better access to better things and we could set that up story wise as well where in the first arena maybe you get critically hurt but you win so a doctor takes interest in you and they patch you up but they put in uh cybernetics which then can be upgraded and that was the only way that you were going to survive yeah i was thinking about that too where like you know you you get the ability to see through walls for a a short period of time or you know again things you wouldn't really see in a battle royale because it would feel unfair unless of course Mm -hmm. you know it's a regular battle royale and you got it at random um go ahead you had something else you were going to say before i interrupted no, I, I was going directly on that. Uh, the only thing I was going to add was something a little sadistic where that would be like the first maybe character that you bond to after winning. Because I imagine always that the first arena would be a solo and then this doctor would be here, but it'd be almost like a nook scenario where he's like, you have to pay me back, though. I'm your sponsor. So yeah. now you have my cybernetics inside of you, but you're I, I'm sponsoring you and now you have to go and win using my cybernetics and kind and go from there. And that would be like your first like side character that, that you start to bond with. Yeah. It could be cool too. If there are a couple different scenarios of that, depending on like, let's say you, you don't even get hit at all, like Mm -hmm. in your Mm -hmm. first match. So uh, like some other sponsor wants you because they think you're an up and comer, like rising star. But like, if you're critically injured, that's when you lose, you know, like the very end of the match, you you uh, kill the last person, but then realize there's like a grenade next to you and it, you know, ends up hitting you and blowing off your arm or something. Um, or, uh, you know, you have midway health. And so, like, you end up finding somebody who wants to help you train because they think you can be better than you are, etc., yeah. Yeah, that'd be interesting where it's like one path is the sponsor, another path is the coach, and then the other path is the doctor, right? If yeah. you end up in critical condition. Yeah, absolutely. Um and yeah, that would be really cool to do like your skill tree or like your ability. Uh all that stuff is done outside of of the arena, outside of Gladius Rising, and all of your armor and guns is done inside. Because that would give you progression on both sides and right. reasons to go talk to people and and get like maybe one of them wants you to go do a fetch quest for them um, or, you know, not just different things that you could do out in the outside world um, as yeah. as. Uh... I could definitely see uh, depending on how and I, I feel like this could be a very in-depth like 60, 70 hour campaign where like you have the battle royale stuff but in the hub world i didn't realize it was going to be big enough for you to drive around i thought it was going to be just big enough for you to like kind of walk in a big circle and then you go into the match but if to, it's big enough to, to drive be around, fair to be fair the my original idea was a small hub city where you used mostly parkour to kind of run up buildings and and run down side streets and do stuff like that but as we've been talking about it and just talking about customization, I just kind of threw a, a car out there just because it'd be cool to have yeah. a car. But in in my original idea, I I was just like you were thinking the hub world is is somewhat small and contained. Yeah, but um, I, th- I think it would be cool if, yeah, you had a car, you could even get like a motorbike or like a hoverboard and you could just like go around the city. And it's kind of like a big gta-esque city where it's it, it's not that big it's not even cyberpunk big but it's big enough where you could drive around there's places you could drive to there's verticality like uh cyberpunk 2077 where there's like a lot of like layers to the city and there's like uh multiple uh heights that you could go to um and then while you talk to npcs out there you could get side quests and i imagine you have access to your wrist gun even in the hub world so maybe you could go like very small short like not full on battles, but like small kind of battles while you're out in the hub world. And like, you just like bring down some hood, like hoodums or whatever. And like you save a old lady and she's like, pays hooligans. You. yeah, hooligans. And, um, you could do like small side quests and some of them will even ask like you to do stuff in the match. Like, well, Hey, while you're in the match, maybe they'll like give you a bounty, like find this person. Yeah. Find this person. Yeah. yeah. I mean, again, very similar to stuff you do in regular battle royales, right? Um, in 
uh, war zone, you get uh, bounties for going and killing a certain person in uh, Fortnite. They've got the bounty boards where you go up to it and it assigns exactly. you like a random person. And speaking um, of, so yeah, there's absolutely stuff like you could do like that. Right. Like, uh, for example, like speaking of sponsorships, maybe you get a side quest, which is like, hey, you're a rising star. Can you use our new assault rifle in your next match? And then you get this free assault rifle and you like have to get a certain amount of kills with it um or a certain amount of damage or something and then you get a reward from that side quest type of thing you know the the other thing i was thinking about too is uh like very hunger games-esque where like you could build relationships with certain characters and then they could have you could build favor for them and they would send you like mm. gifts throughout the match that was another thing i thought about and very, then the yeah. other thing was um we were talking about like the sense of progression right and warzone has a great balance for this where you're always upgrading a certain set of weapons and gaining experience and you get to put that in your quote-unquote loadout and then the loadout will drop either randomly or you can call in a, a loadout so another thing i was thinking if you know it ended up feeling better for you to start out with absolutely nothing until you could build up enough like you know stuff to like call in a loadout drop or like get to a station to call in a loadout if you're just flush with g coins um and then call in your your armor and guns and stuff in like a, a crate yeah. i thought that would be a way to like balance out the beginning of a match so it felt more like a traditional battle royale so you either have to like find some weapons and run to the nearest um station to call in your drop and uh and get it that way or it, you can um you know build the resources as you get crates you get small amounts of of g g coins or whatever that allow you to purchase it and whatnot Definitely. Um, so no matter what you can get access to it but you don't have it right at the start of the match that way again everyone starts on an even playing field and maybe that's how you could incorporate um these crazier characters with, for like not being there right at the very beginning and just slaughtering other teams and then lastly that's something else too how do you design this game to where the characters exist within separate of you but aren't necessarily going after you because you know nobody likes it when you shoot one bullet at a camp of enemies and every single enemy starts mm. shooting at you because they somehow know exactly where you shot from. Nobody likes that. Yeah. So so it's interesting to think about the like probably one of the hardest design um, mechanics would be figuring out how to make it feel like a battle royale match without a feeling like a bunch of bots and b feeling like not everyone is just gunning for you but then again you, do you want them to be fighting each other because then you like or at least do you want them to be fake fighting each other where the number goes down periodically but certain characters will be there until you kill them or do you do it to where they can kill each other and who knows what'll happen if you wait till the very end maybe in, when you're in the final circle Maybe you'll be the last one of the last ones left alive again, minus one of the the core people. Um, but yeah, so like that's an interesting thing to try and tackle and figure out because if you're really trying to emulate the battle royale experience, I mean, you might want to be the guy that hides in the tub for you know forty minutes before the end right. of the match. I mean, I know I nothing about game design. We are not game devs here, and uh, <laughs> what. I think would be the coolest way to do this is yeah, put everyone has the Super Smash Bros AI slider on them. And we as the developers would put a slider on each character for their personality. And we'll have like an AI system where they're like smarter, dumber, uh, average, and we'll mix all of that up for all these different people. Kind of like how in Westworld they have like all these little parameters. We'll adjust that for every single one of our characters. And then how the bots AI would work when you as a player jump into a fight that is happening between two AI teams or two solos, how I imagine it would have to work is you put everything on like an aggro based system. 
So if you just come in and get one or two shots in on one person, maybe that person will start coming and looking for you, but they are still focused on this other team because they have more aggro points to them because they're already in this fight, but they are now aware that there's another encounter. And maybe even if you shot and missed, even just the sound will maybe register in all these AIs aggro meters letting them know there's someone else coming and then as you attack them and you gain more aggro maybe they'll stop um attacking the other team and going for you because now you are a bigger threat and that's kind of like how battle royales work if you're getting third partied in apex if i'm getting third party and i've already been in a fight i'm not going to focus on the new team until i've done dealing with the first problem Unless that new party is becoming a more immediate problem, then I'll switch my attention and go to those people instead. Um, because now they are my immediate thing because they're getting closer. Whereas maybe the people I was fighting is like 300 meters away and I don't really have to worry about them right now. I was thinking about also adding behaviors. So it, core to their personality, right? So if you have, uh, we talked about the old man who doesn't want to actually engage until they actually have to, or somebody who's more, maybe they're a bit of a coward. So if there are too many people, they always pull out and retreat. And then there's another person who's aggressive and wants the limelight. So they're trying to get as many kills as possible and are very skill-based. So I was thinking there's, there could be different behaviors governing. And unfortunately, it does make it so that there's a bit more random, but depending on the behaviors and who's in your match, there are going to be more aggressive people who are going to take those kills. Yeah, And I think there will be know. pros and cons in terms of progression. If you do want to play this game, like the guy who hides in the bathtub for 40 minutes, you could do that, but then you just won't get that many G coins and like cash, you know? Uh, and it, progression will just slow down significantly. And then maybe you won't even get like that many sponsors. Some side quests won't open up to you. Um, maybe you'll get a specific a sponsor from someone that's like, Hey, I see you hiding out there. I have this cloak you see, and it adds and, plus 10 to your avoidance. And then you, you get and, a sponsor that way. And there's people going to be making fun of you too, as you're hiding into yeah. the bathtub. Like we have to add that as well. Because people are going to go after the one player who's just sitting there and they don't know which bathroom he's in. And he's just like freaking out <laughs> as it's all happening around him. Like they, like they just have hardcore anxiety. You know, uh, you know, it'd be really cool as if like we were talking about dynamic events, like uh, obviously Red Dead Redemption is a ridiculously complex game that took years to make. But it has some of the most dynamic events that happen at the most random times and it's really cool as those those dynamic events happen um but yeah it'd be so funny to be slowly creeping around a corner and you hear just like oh my god oh my god what I, I don't know what and you're like you you start to like go like where is that coming from and you know you hear it it's from your right side so you go into the building to your right and then you get closer and it's like oh god i don't know i don't know what it was why did i do this and then you get closer to the bathroom and it gets louder and then you realize it's this dude just sitting in the bathtub and then you can just literally walk up and take his wrist pistol off yeah <laughs> and that's, and that's that's like that's... the end of him or you can just be like the okay. asshole that okay. shoots him you know right yeah that would be that would be really cool like really neat environmental storytelling dynamic event sort of things that happen every once in a while um like that one would be like a one-off right like there would probably be other ones that randomly hide in the bathtub for like a, a general just ai purpose like you were saying develop some sort of ai algorithm that has like different settings for aggressive timid stuff like that and those are all kind of randomly generated either on a single person base or a team base um and that way the matches all kind of feel unique but then there are certain specific random spawns uh for different matches that can happen like once and then once they happen they're gone um or unless there's someone who survives maybe you come across them multiple times uh to where like you know you knock them down and they fault in a way and uh like yeah just those sort of things um but yeah like that would be such a fun way to build personality and just 
have these moments that you can tell your friend about. And then some people may never experience them because let, let's say like we, they do spawn, right. And they only spawn once. Um, if, if we talk about like a timer counting down for each match, you know, eventually that person's going to die from like the circle shrinking or, you know, uh, someone else is going to find him and kill him. Um, and, uh, so, if he if he dies in that match like that's it it's gone and so someone may never get to experience that weird little little interaction maybe we could i think that's just to put it so like if there was people out there that are completionists and want to find all these little things eventually there'll be a wiki made for all this but maybe we can make it so like the guy who hides in the bathroom he's only in that first rank matches like you could only encounter them in that first rounds of matches. And then after that, you will never be able to encounter that person again, because they're never going to make it past that. Rank. See, I was thinking once you complete the game, that's when you can unlock simulations or memories, and then you can mm. turn. So then you, the player themselves will have a menu for dynamic events that they can turn on. So then it, it there'll be like kind of you can see past it. That way, if you don't want to play the game again, you don't have to. You can just turn these dynamic events on that you can then experience yourself if you want to and go back. Honestly, that would be like one of the coolest things for replayability. Like if you still earned cash and you still earn G coins, but you could after you beat the game, you literally walk up to the person to start a match and he's like, hey. I have a new console for you to try just before you start the match and you go over there and you can set it to all of the heroes. Like all 40 characters are the hero characters. Like let's just say there are exactly 36 hero characters in the game and you can have every single one of them in a single match. Yeah. Like you can, you can, you can choose, pick and choose like different people. Maybe like, maybe some of the, some of the heroes that aren't super important, but kind of important have like, a random generated stat block and then they'll be you could like favorite those people if you want and then you could bring those people back too if you really liked how the random generators make this guy look the personality they brought to the table and you just had a fun experience with them you could favorite that ai or npc and then like in the simulation room you could fight other NPCs that you've beaten before, if you want to favorite them or like look through the pages of people that you fought against um, and just find out people who like stood out to you, you know? All right. Well, let's talk about the music in this game. I mean, I just hear whatever cyberpunk sounds like to you, I guess. You know, <laughs> I'm assuming there's a radio channel. You could you could flip through all that. But during the game, the actual battles, I feel like what the music is in there is very minimal. It's just natural sounds. And then every time at half the halfway point, there'll be like a little jingle at the start of the game. There'll be a jingle at the end of the game. There's a jingle. Um, but I, I imagine music's very minimal while you're fighting. But outside the hub world, we'll have like a whole radio dial and radio shows and TV channels and ads and whatnot. I am uh, imagine that it's like 80s synth wave, uh, like uh, lo-fi stuff that's yeah. just playing. I also like like 90s noise, like uh, No Man's Sky type of stuff, like 65 Days of Static and all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Pricing. This sounds like a $70 game to y'all, right? Yeah, this is full pop. There's no way. Yeah, think? that was my thought as well. Sweet. Well, I know that you kind of already have a name, but we have this section here. So, Alex, <laughs> it's time to start your timer because it's time to name this game. It's almost going to be instantaneous. Well, I, I have and... I have some input here. Oh, you have, you have a couple of different workshop names? Go for it. So, Timer's going. W- what was your original title you had for this game, Philip? Yeah, so so the title of the game is Living in Elysium. What do you like? How how would you like instead? The name of the game is Gladius Rising dot dot Living in Elysium. And then you get Gladius Rising 2, and then it's like a whole new thing. And then and then the map. Oh wait, you said the map's called, No, the game is Gladius Rising. Maybe this map is called Elysian. And then in the second game we have another subtitle and we call this arena a different thing, you know? 
I'd be into that if we took the save data from the first one to build out your main character as the top guy who now you're trying to that you Topple idolize down. and now they're in magic. Yeah. Dope. So then you take all your save data. Yeah. So all of the met all of the metrics, somehow we're gonna make this all work. So mm. all the characters are tuned based off this save data, and then it all imports in. So now all the people that you ran with in the first living in, in Elysium are up at the top now. And they're all left the way that you just had them, almost frozen in time until you pick back up. What what you just told me is that this game comes out at the very beginning of the PlayStation 6 and its sequel comes out at the very end of PlayStation 6. Right. Because this would be a nightmare to try and do over con- like cross console gen. And the game is feels to me like especially like. From a general perspective, like keeping it small for the city, keeping it small for the the map for the Battle Royale um, makes it easier to build story and characters. But I feel like the complexity in the AI systems and the sliders that we were talking about would be something they'd be working on for literal years. Yeah, they're going to be <laughs> building all the AI systems before they even start on the game. So, so it'd be it'd be easier. It'd be easier to make uh the second game sure yeah but it still would be very hard especially if we're gonna try and import uh save data over oh yeah and then the thing is the worst part is people's imaginations so then it lives inside everybody's head for maybe five six seven years so when it comes out again everyone has this head canon of how things have gone and expectations going to the second right. one Gladius Rising, are we cool with that? I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, the my original title of Living in Elysium was before I created, you know, Gladius Rising for like the the arena yeah. itself. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, Gladius Rising is also a good title. Gladius Rising. All right. And if you wanted to know the exact time, it's it's a little. Uh, it's it's here and there, but it was about in a, in a minute and twenty seconds that we that we came to that. Sweet. <laughs> did you, did you have any naming ideas? Me? No, I I oh, really okay. attached myself to both of those. Um, I just went from there. I have like a little notebook here that I've been just posting ideas in like a little web off of Gladius Rising and Living in Elysium. So I I attach myself to those. Usually, right here, Alex will give like a back of the box description. Of Gladius Rising, but would you like to do the honors, Phil, since it's your game? No, no, I'd love to hear the traditional back of the box. All right. In Gladius Rising, there are 36 people. You, living in the slums, have grown up watching on the big screens. These heroes, these streamers, these entertainers come up through Elysium in Gladius Rising. You yourself begin your first match after watching your sister brutally die or disappear. We haven't decided. (laughs) And from there, you barely scrape by in your first match. Join a faction, get G coin cash and, and turn into the system. Will you get chewed up or will you make it your own or will you break it in Gladius rising? All right. So I think we have a game here, Alex. What do you think? Is this game you would want to play? And is it fun? Yeah, this is everything I've ever wanted because in uh, Battle Royale, what I hate is it all goes away. So I'll put 40 minutes into a game and then after that, there will be action and then it all goes. But if I could have a living world, this would probably honestly sate my anime drive too because I'm developing characters and I and if there's different seasons, like if there's a really good season ending, I'm like, oh boy, I can't wait till tomorrow to see what's happening with character A, B, and C, my faction, things are going in. So yeah, th- this would be an autoplay for me. Yeah, I'm really digging this idea. Uh, single player battle royale sounds like a whole new genre of video game. Uh, like you said, Phil, there's, there's a whole genre of anime for battle royale so i think there could be a whole new like story driven kid like hunger game style a kid gets like kidnapped and abducted and put into this death game and there could be a whole slew of games like that yeah and what, what's interesting is like the the idea behind it doesn't have to be as big as like the the rpg that we crafted here today right like it can be a lot smaller or it can be 
something completely different, like the one we were describing for a quick minute earlier, where it's more story driven than, you know, like video game battle royale driven. Um, there's so many different opportunities for the battle royale genre to creep over into single player story based games. Yeah. I mean, you could do a basic gladiator single player game where you're just a gladiator trying to not die in the Coliseum, you know? Battle Royale. <laughs> now that we have a complete game, what game studio would you assign to be able to make Gladius Rising the best? I mean, we've, so we mentioned this the Nemesis wow. system, so it has to be like Monolith. And uh, is it Monolith I... that does. Okay. Okay. Can... Can I go first? Yeah. Or do you, you got something? Go for it. So I personally, when I was thinking about the movement in this game and like the idea of speed and fun, uh, what came to my mind was um, uh, sun, Sunset Overdrive. In um, Insomniac? So so Insomniac was would be like, obviously, they're going to tie down for Marvel for the next three decades. But um you know, like that was that would be my ideal studio to work on something like this, because as as you said earlier, um, the the depth of writing that they've been able to put into the Spider-Man games and their ability to continuously make amazing video games one after another after another shows that they not only have the capability to produce something like this, but also make the story and characters 1000% engaging from the basic NPCs that are walking around the environment that you get to interact with. Like you were saying earlier, taking selfies with and stuff to the more dynamic characters that you actually interact with and have story moments with. Um, if you have ever played Sunset Overdrive, it has a lot of these kind of like dynamic events in it. They're not as quite as fleshed out as something like um, Red Dead Redemption 2, but they still exist within this world. And I really do think that they could be like an amazing studio for like the cyberpunk aesthetic, the kind of over the top action, the fluidity of movement, all that stuff. Yeah, that's actually a great studio. It matches up on so many levels there. See, when I was thinking about it, I was like, who would have the kind of resources? So my first thing was Epic could definitely make a single pl single player game about a uh, battle royale as they have taken so much from that. And they have created um, what is an organic metaverse, whereas other people, I think, overtly try to create it. They seem to just add on to pieces, then make a universe where this could be a subsection of that universe. And then the other one I could think of was the one who could, if there was like something in their back pocket where there's a map and there's characters and they're developing and they really haven't, they've been taking swings but haven't gotten anywhere yet, would be Ubisoft, where they could do characters and kind of go back to Ubisoft of old. And instead of there being a map with things to check out, and it's just a massive map, they just have that one thing that they focus on with different characters going through it. And they always add a bunch of personality to their games and everything. And it feels like they've almost like they need this to, to go back and hearken into a new gen, uh, a new generation or kind of uh, transform themselves. Cause it feels like they've kind of been stuck in the middle here and don't know where to go. Yeah. Uh, I only mentioned Monolith, Mon Monolith because of their, uh, they have the nemesis system and they won't give it to anybody. They won't let anyone use it, um, but imagine what if this is Rockstar's next game <laughs> and they're just <laughs> like, you know what? We're going to focus hard on this one mechanic part of the game where it's like this battle royale and then we'll really flesh out this open world hub area that you got and you got all this interaction and side quests and people to talk to and things to see. If... If Rockstar were to do it, you know we'd get Gladius Rising online, yeah, <laughs> which is yeah. basically just yeah. an online version of Battle Royale, but you have the hub world to go back to. <laughs> right. And with that... Um, oh, well, sorry. Actually, wait. I, while you guys were talking, it made me think of one other studio, and this this studio would make a somewhat compelling game with decent characters... And almost good enough gameplay, 
but it would be considered the Euro jank version of the game. Okay. And that would be Spider. Oh, yeah. Spider, Alex, if you remember, they're the guys who made uh, freaking. Oh, fuck. What is that game called? The one that I. Technomancer, Greedfall. Greedfall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I played a lot of Greedfall. Oh, man. I, yeah. how so much there would I be... wish I loved Greedfall, but I just couldn't do it. <laughs> It, yeah, it would be uh, – there would be a charm there, like a very strong charm yeah. that they would have. And a nasty it, old woman. It would woman. be almost great. <laughs> yeah, right, where it's like scratching there, where you're like, there's – it's there. It's like that's the studio that I feel like realistically would actually take this project on. Yeah. It, and almost nail it. The problem is the hub world <laughs> is sectioned off in like four loadable areas that you have like a five-minute that's, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> Like a loading screen, and then there's like fantastic characters, yeah, yeah. but then when you're battling, you're like, there's something, I just want to do a little more here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to do a little more, I want it to feel just a little bit better. <laughs> That's a great call. Spider's great. I I, I love their games. Um, it's just, I wish Greedfall was slightly better, but... It's how I feel about Technomancer. Yeah, yeah. And with that, our 228th IP has gone gold. We hope you look forward to this experience that will probably never release. We have a Patreon. If you'd like to give us extra support, please head over to patreon.com slash wearenotgamedevs. For just a dollar, patrons receive episodes early and an extra podcast at the beginning, which you caught the tail end of our conversation at the beginning of this episode. That's patreon.com slash wearenotgamedevs. Like, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. And if they ask for review, instead of reviewing our show, become your inner game critic and review Gladius Rising. The video game we just created. Before we go, Phil, Philip, thank you so much for stopping by the show. Uh, it, this was a lot of fun. And now this game is forever a want in my heart. Um, is, is there any, a, another plug or uh, where can people find you? Uh, no, I, I can just reiterate, like I said, at the, uh, the top of the episode or the sort of the secondary top of the episode. Uh, you can find me at Phil J Woodward with two L's or at Philip J Woodward, uh, with two L's on most platforms, uh, at Phil J Woodward is Twitter. And then you can check out our, uh, interview content called out of our league at simply Fantastic. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And we'll be back next Friday with another new IP. Again, my name is Jay Yee. I'm AG. And I'm Phil. Thank you, and please remember that we are not game devs. Very true. We're definitely going to have to have like a multiplayer component, right? Like it, after the game releases, nah. put a DLC mm -mm. in and be like, here it is. <laughs> I don't want it. Here's what you guys want. I don't want other people to ruin this for me. This is my own little like curated thing where these people have been playing. Their personalities have been cultivated. I don't want somebody else coming in here and into my world. Like I'm almost <laughs> defensive about it. I just it. had another random thought. Who made uh, who made that game Outriders? Uh, that was uh, uh, People Can Fly. Oh, we could give it to them where it's like Outriders was a game that was framed like a like a live service game, but it wasn't. This is like it's like a battle royale, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs>